These little confetti shakers are super popular right now and with Silhouette Studio you can create them from just about any shape you'd like. I've done an Easter egg and a bunny. The project was super, super fun and it's not all that complicated once you know the steps and the pieces required to put them together. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success and I do hope that you're going to join our little community. Now these confetti shakers can be made from cardstock or craft foam. I use craft foam because they require fewer layers, but cardstock works as well. Let's get into the design process so you can create your own. These are the pieces you're going to need for an Easter egg shaker. The nice thing is, is you can take this same process and apply it to nearly any shape to create your own custom shakers and that's what we're looking at today. We have our back piece which is just solid. We have our sides which are going to be stacked. They are hollowed out and the confetti sits in the middle. The clear cover is going to be cut out of acetate and that's going to hold the confetti in place. And then the top layer goes over the acetate cover to cover up any of the glue that is visible. Let's click over to a fresh page to see how we got here. We can grab an ellipse from our drawing tools and pull that out. If you double click, that's going to bring up the editing points. We can pull these blue squares in a bit at the top to make that thinner. We can make the base wider and then adjust the sides as well. And it's a little bit lopsided, but I think it's pretty good. Now we can scale this down. I'm gonna go with right around three inches for the height. This is our back layer. Let's duplicate that. We can start working on the sides. I'm going to open up the offset panel. We're going to do an internal offset and we want this kind of thick. The thicker the offset, the sturdier the shaker is going to be, but you need to still have room in the middle for your confetti. I have this set at 0 0.150 and that looks pretty good. I'm going to select both of these pieces, right click and make a compound path. Now that has cut out the center and that looks perfect. I'm going to switch this up now to pink just so that we can see how it looks once they're stacked. The next piece we need to create is the acetate cover. I'm going to select the original egg shape and create another internal offset, but I want this one to be almost as wide as the original shape so that we have some room to glue it down. By keeping it just slightly smaller than the original shape, we can be sure that it's not going to stick out of the edges once it's all glued together. Let's switch this up to a light gray color and this isn't totally necessary, but I like to open up my fill style panel and increase the transparency so that it's see-through and it kind of gives the illusion of the acetate cover. We can set that to the side. Our final layer is going to be the top layer and all we need to do is duplicate the side for this. And I like to switch it up to a lighter pink. And this one is going to cover up any of the visible glue and the edges of the acetate cover. You're going to need to cut out one egg shape for the back. You're going to need to cut out multiple sides. This is what's going to give you the thickness and the number of copies you'll need is going to be dependent on the thickness of your material and the thickness of your confetti. You're going to need one acetate sheet and one top layer. Now, if we take all of these pieces and stack them, you can see how it's all going to fit together. We'll also need to bring this one to the front now and you have your egg shaped shaker. Let's move on now to a more complicated shape. I got this from Creative Fabrica and it is a layered bunny SVG. And when they're all stacked together, it is super cute, but it's not exactly what I was looking for. I was looking specifically for a bunny with an egg cutout. So this is really the only layer we need. Let's select these, right click and delete. First thing we wanna do is scale this guy down and make a copy. 
we need to make sure that we have a copy that is the same size as what we're working with just in case anything goes wrong. Now we do need a solid bunny shape for our back. Let's right click and release the compound path here. I'll need to ungroup. There's still no extra bounding boxes, so let's ungroup again. I'm not sure why everything was grouped twice in this file, but it was. Once it's ungrouped, you can select just the back layer and pull that away. We are going to select all of these pieces here and group them together and set them aside. We're going to need those in just a bit. This is our back layer. I'm going to set this to blue just for consistency. We're going back to our original copy. Let's duplicate that. We're going to work on the sides now. This time I'm going to do a little bit more than just the internal offset because the only hollowed out area is going to be the Easter egg. But I only want his hands and feet here on the top layer. I just want an oval cut out for the sides. Let's grab an ellipse from our drawing tools and just draw that out. And again, I do need to see behind this shape, so let's increase the transparency. You can see the outline of the original bunny now. We want to make this oval so that it covers the entire cutout, and we can get that set in place so that all of the edges are covered. We can work on the editing points some as well. This doesn't have to be exact, but we can get it close. That looks really good. So we're going to select our bunny and release the compound path because we don't want the eyes and the ears cut out. We just want the oval shape cut out. We also need to ungroup twice again. Now we can select just the back layer and the oval that we created, right click and make a compound path. We can pull this over to the side and you can see all of these pieces are left over. We don't need those. Right click and delete. Switch this layer over to pink. And if we stack these on top of each other, you can see that the outline lines up perfectly and only the Easter egg shape is hollowed out on this. Next up, we need to create our acetate cover, so we are going to have to release the compound path on this again. We want to select just the oval that we created and duplicate that. Now we can recreate the compound path for this. We want our acetate cover to be slightly larger than this oval shape. Let's open up our offset panel, create an offset, and we're going to fill that with the light gray color and increase the transparency so that it's see-through. You can see that that is going to set nicely in place. It's not going to come outside of any of the edges, but it does have a little bit of room to glue. That is perfect. Now we have our back, we have our sides, we have our acetate cover, and the top layer on this one is going to be a little bit different as well. Let's duplicate our original again. Now I do want his little hands and feet left for this one. I don't want his face and his ears just yet. I'm going to cut those out of adhesive vinyl. So once again, we're going to release the compound path, ungroup, ungroup. Now we're going to select the Easter egg cutout shape, hold down our shift key and select the back layer, right click and make a compound path. And we don't need these pieces. We can delete. That is our top cover. Let's switch them over to the light pink. And I'm going to switch the outline as well so we can see it a little bit better. The last thing we have to work on is his face and his ears and I did mine out of vinyl. Let's ungroup this. We don't need the egg cut out. We can select his ears, his cheeks, his nose, his mouth, right click and group all of those together. I did all of those in the bright pink. Let's bring that to the front. Now his eyes are looking a little bit funny here. That's because we released the compound path. Let's select all of the pieces, 
make a compound path, I'm going to switch these over to black. Now I can set, bring these to the front and set those in place. Now we can select all of his facial features, group them together and set them over here. Let's take a look at our stacking. This is our back layer. This one is the side. It's the one we're going to cut multiples of for the thickness. We can bring in the acetate cover. We have our top cover. We need to bring this to the front and our little face. All of the layers are going to fit perfectly together. This did take a little bit more work, a little bit more brain power, but it is totally doable. And now we can move on to getting these cut out. I am cutting these out of craft foam using the three millimeter craft blade. That's the one that goes into carriage number two. And you can see that it is cutting out the hooks and loops that are shown in the send page. And that's gonna be just fine. It is cutting outside of the area that we're going to use. It's perfectly normal. It just takes a little bit longer for the craft blade to adjust and it needs that extra room to turn around. I use the settings that are in Silhouette Studio for the craft foam and these cut out perfectly. I went with three copies for my sides to build up the confetti well. Now I'm going to glue all of them together making sure that all of the edges are lined up nice and tidy. When that's finished we can grab our confetti glitter and pour some in. You do, however, want to make sure that the glue is completely dry before you put your confetti in or it's going to stick to the sides. Using hot glue gives you a slight advantage because it dries faster in the well and you can add your confetti sooner. However, you do need to be careful that the edges are lined up properly if you're using hot glue because you don't really have that amount of time to adjust and get things lined up properly with hot glue. After the confetti is added, you want to glue down your acetate and the top layer, then add in the cute little bunny face, and this is just about done. Now go create something amazing, and I'll see you in the next video.